In today's video, I'm calling Gucci out. My goal is to use this as an example to have you always look at the bigger picture of things. In 2018, Gucci had a very racist piece of clothing make it all the way to the runway. Now, some may say maybe this is an isolated incident. The research says that this is actually more of a characteristic of how their organization operates as a whole. So let's get into it. So literally the whole idea of my dissertation was to try to figure out if this one isolated incident and many others from different brands was just that, just an isolated incident, or if it's showing that the brand as a whole has a bigger issue. Which leads me to question number one. To what extent does subtle racist imagery find its way find its way into Gucci's advertising. As usual, let's start with the facts and a little bit of history. Gucci is an Italian brand that was founded in 1921 in Florence, Italy. This is where their headquarters are still located today. They have global offices all around the world, New York, Milan, Hong Kong, etc. Their creative director, Alessandro Michel, lives and works in Italy still. Uh, for those who don't know, a creative director oversees all things creative. That means the clothing, the advertising, the videos, the photography, all of it. He's been the creative director since 2015. So this is where things get interesting. Gucci, as you might imagine, being a European brand for a long time, had a very long history of having just a very white audience. As time has gone on, as you know, they have begun to attract people of many different colors. Has anyone heard of Gucci Mane? Gucci is an aspirational product, right? So that means that people associate it with wealth and uh, status and prestige in this world, which explains the price and why people try to flex with it so much. A very large amount of those people happen to be people of color and minorities. In another video, I'll get into the aspirational products. That's a whole another thing. So one could assume that a brand that has a wide audience of people would like to cater to those people, especially with their advertising. As you might remember from my tokenism video, people respond favorably to advertising that has a diverse group of people in it. Not only is it morally right, but it's financially smart as well for my business people out there. So without further ado, let's jump into the numbers. Let's look at the things of what I actually did a bunch of my research on. I examined every single campaign that Alessandro Michel put out since he started. They were conveniently right on the Gucci website for me. So if you want to check them out, I'll put that link down below as well. So the numbers are pretty straightforward, but they get complex. So try to stay with me. There are a total of 37 campaigns over the last four to five years. In those campaigns, there's 286 photos and countless videos. Of those 286 photos, only 56 included black models, which is just under 20%, and only 22 had Asian models, which is just under 8%. But wait, there's more. Of the 37 campaigns, 13 had featured models, such as Harry Styles. So that means the whole little campaign was featured around this one person. So for his campaigns, there are no people of color, for example. If you break down that section of stuff, five were white celebrities, two were of a black fashion designer, and six were Asian celebrities. Remember how I said that 22 of the 286 photos featured Asian models? Well, 19 of those models were in the exclusively Asian featured campaigns, which means of the ones that were not specifically featured campaigns, there were only three Asian models in all the rest of the normal campaigns. As far as black models, 23 of the 56 photos were from the exclusively black campaigns, which means the normal campaigns that weren't featuring someone specific had only 33 black models included, and a lot of them could be pegged as tokenism, as I'll show you here. What I'm trying to show you is that this is not an isolated incident. It's very telling that Gucci is very, not very inclusive. Oh, by the way, I should mention I'm not leaving out other minorities in this report. Huh, minority report. The only reason I'm saying black and Asian is because there are literally zero other minorities represented in all 286 photos in these campaigns over all these years. Remember, look at the bigger picture. Think outside of just where your head is at. So now ask yourself why? Why is Glu Gucci? Why is Gucci not inclusive? Why did they make this racist mistake? Why are there no other minorities involved in any of these campaigns? Research says because the company is not diverse enough and it's clear that if there are people of color working there, they're not elevating their voices so that they're being heard. Because I'm pretty sure it's safe to say if there are a couple more people of color walking around in Gucci, they wouldn't be making such 
crazy mistakes like making a sweater that looks like blackface. So let's relate this to now. Just looking at the surface is not enough. Murder of George Floyd is an example of how the bigger system is flawed. White privilege is a thing because the system favors white men and laws and policies keep that up. I think the understanding is a huge first step and I hope that this video helped put things in perspective and made you think just a little bit differently. Because as we know, that is what we all need to do is think about things a little bit differently. Thanks for watching. Stay optimistic. Okay. That should do it.